Hey, home groups. With the election soon approaching, um, there's a lot of things that we ought to talk about as Christians. What is our perspective on these varying topics and varying platforms and varying discussion points that are being blasted across uh, news and social media right now? Well, the one that we, we dealt with this past Sunday is the value of human life, the sanctity of human life, namely in regards to abortion. And we went back to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 21, because in that text you see the application of the command, you shall not kill. You shall not kill fellow human beings. There is to be no unauthorized killing of human beings. Now, what does that mean? How does that play out in normal everyday life? What does the value of human life look like in specific occurrences that happen in life? And Exodus 21 gives us that. It provides us several situations and circumstances that if this happens, this is how life is to be handled. And there are three large principles that, that we gleaned from that particular text. And the number one, human life is valued by exacting the death penalty against anyone who, who commits a heinous crime against a fellow human being anywhere from murdering a fellow human being to kidnapping and trafficking a human being, these things merit the death penalty. And that might sound contradictory. If we value human life and there's to be no unauthorized human killing, how can we say the death penalty is right? Well, the death penalty demonstrates the value of human life. When you kill a human being, that sin is so grievous that the only punishment that fits that crime is the death of the one who committed the crime. And so these, these crimes against fellow human beings are so dehumanizing and so wicked in the eyes of God that the death penalty is merited. And that shows you the value that God places on human life. The second group of situations and, and scenarios enacted in the text is that human life is valued because <clears throat> restraint is placed upon the exaction of vengeance uh, on those who commit crimes. In the administration of justice, there is a limit placed on vengeance. You, when, when someone hurts one that you love, uh, you want to pay them back. You want them to hurt for the way that they have hurt your loved one. And that's a, that's, that's a phenomenon that's gone back as long as human history. But God limits that vengeance the punishment must fit the crime. It must not exceed the crime. And there is a particular passage in that section of text that deals with a woman who is pregnant and she is near two men who are fighting and one of the men hits her uh, inadvertently in the fight and causes her to have uh, a premature birth. The baby comes out, literally is what the text says. And in that case, what do you do? Well, that's where you have this famous statement, an eye for an eye, life for a life, tooth for a tooth kind of thing. And the implication is that the, that human baby who is still in his or her mother's womb at that particular time, that that baby's life is as valuable as the mother's life, as the life of any other human being. Because if that baby dies as a result of this injury, then that person who caused it will be put to death. But if the baby doesn't die, then the punishment, that the, the, the harm inflicted upon the baby or on the mother uh, will be then inflicted upon the, the perpetrator of the crime. And so it shows you the value that God places on human life in that regard as well. It's a very interesting text and I think a very significant text for the abortion debate. It demonstrates very conclusively that the baby inside the womb is just as much a human being to be valued and protected and given the right to live as any other human being. Abortion is not health care. Abortion is murder. It's plain and simple. And as Christians, we must stand against things like that. And then thirdly and finally, human life is valued by the preventing of negligence that brings about harm to fellow human beings. And we talked about the example of texting and driving. Uh, our negligence to pay attention and to be a good steward of the life around us uh, is, is something that is, is is spoken against in the scripture. Now, in the ancient world, they didn't have cars and they didn't have phones to text. They had a, an ox that would go and gore people and you didn't keep your ox restrained. That's, that's a very similar situation to driving a, a two-ton car down the highway at 70 miles an hour and not controlling that car because you're distracted by your phone or by something else and causing injury to, to others. Those crimes are dealt with um, in the scripture. 
because human life is valuable. So as you discuss these things tonight, I hope that you have a profitable discussion. Uh, I hope that you have a helpful discussion, and I hope that your heart is more prepared to go into the voting booth in just a few weeks uh, thinking about these things.